What is cracking, my YouTube fucks? It is Tristan back with part five, chapter five, of the My Day with Diddy audiobook series. It has been a long time coming. I have taken a, a quite a long recess, about two or three months at this point. I don't even remember when I made uh, chapter four. I'll have to check into that. But nonetheless, I am bringing you chapter five right now. Hopefully I can get through this. Man, if I could get through this all in one take, that would be, that would be champion status. Um... Probably not, though. I'm probably going to fuck it up quite a bit. That's at 33 seconds, and I don't feel like editing a ton. So. And my dog is barking, and I have to redo this. What the fuck? Chapter 5. The Good Life at a Great Price. Guaranteed. So I woke up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. You know, that, that song is very relevant to the story at hand, but that still doesn't change the fact that all new music blows more than Seth MacFarlane's Oscars performance. Man, I'm relentless! But in all fairness, his performance was terrible. As the bright sun came into perspective through my small window, I knew it was time to start the day. Rolling out of bed quite literally, I stumbled over to the mini-fridge. As I opened the stainless steel door, I was pleasantly surprised to find my one and only savior. The perfect way to start the day of golfing and nobody can contest it. I found one last cup of Dan and Lighten Fit Strawberry Greek Yogurt. OMG! My shock was justified to say the least. I mean, I'm getting a delicious cup of strawberry yogurt to kick off the morning while only taking in 80 calories and 9 grams of carbohydrates. And I don't even have to sacrifice on taste in the slightest! Wow, this sounds a lot like Comcast business class phone sound quality, but I've already gone down that road one too many times thus far. Reaching for the yogurt, I was as giddy as a schoolgirl once more. Breakfast in hand, I sauntered over to the TV, which I failed to locate in my very deliberate room description last chapter. Anyway, to take yet another digression, the TV was on the right wall opposite of the desk, so... I mean, yeah, that's pretty much that. I mean, it's only a 30-inch, but, you know, whatever. I mean, it works for me. I turned it on to the site of the local news broadcasting a story that was very near and dear to my heart. Yes, they were covering the murder of a hooker with two kids. Ah, yes! I knew that was who the money would be for. I was right on the money there. Actually, you know what? I don't even remember if I kept that in after, after revisions. Actually, go back to chapter 2 when the hooker is about to kill me and see if I left that in. See if I left the part in about uh, the money being for the kids, because I, I really can't remember. That's probably bad. In a back alley, and they suspected it was vehicular. I let loose a few hearty chuckles as they surveyed the crime scene I was a part of only a day prior. It was swarming with cops, the medical examiner, and a hell of a lot of civilians, making me realize that this was a lot bigger than I was expecting. The story itself seemed quite accurate, though, taking into account the Smith & Wesson she put to my head, as well as the car and whatnot. As long as they did not find my DNA, which, you know, they most likely wouldn't in all of that trash, I didn't really care anymore. It was over, and that was that. That is, until the screen flashed the words, BREAKING NEWS, in what was most likely the largest red font they had. I was intrigued. They seemed to have covered all the bases on this one, so I don't know what they could have possibly said extra. When they stated the headline, though, I was utterly shocked. This just into the newsroom. Writer slash director slash actor Ben Affleck has been reported missing after he did not show up for work without even so much as a call. Investigators say they have started an all-out search for the man after they, what they describe as involvements with a gang. No word yet as to whether this is connected to the murder of the actor's family earlier this month. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me, I said as my worst fear had come to pass. I hoped to God after hearing the man's story that he would make it out okay. Maybe we would even hang out afterwards since we, you know, seemed to hit it off pretty well. However, as I took the card out of my pocket, I knew he had to be dead. This gang, he described, seemed far too organized to let him out of their grip, and I dropped his card knowing it meant nothing any longer. I couldn't believe it happened so fast, and I felt as though I had lost someone I'd known for years. In reality, I lost a friend that saved my life. As I lowered my head out of respect, the phone began to ring. I approached the receiver, with my eyes still locked on the TV waiting for possible developments. They wouldn't come so quickly. But I felt it was my duty, huh, <laughs> duty, to keep watch. Grabbing the phone, I answered it as I would any other time. Only in the place where dreams unfold will your problems be solved by the harbinger of gold said a very low-pitched voice. It sounded really garbled, but somewhat like Batman, to be honest. Obviously not my phone, because, you know, I have Comcast business class TV, phone, and internet. I figured he was just using, like, a voice changer or something. Who the hell are you? I, I think you have a wrong number. 
I said as the line went dead. I hung up and picked back up to redial the number, only to find that the line had been cut. I sprinted to my small window. To cut those wires, the culprit would have had to be around the front of the building. So I surveyed the area, sun still shining bright, and I wasn't able to make out much of anything with my retinas on fire. As I gazed left and right and up and down, I barely caught a man running suspiciously out of the corner of my eye. He looked behind him often, so that had to be the culprit. However, if I was planning on giving chase, I was far too late to the party. He had gotten a ways down the road in a surprisingly short amount of time. The man was well on his way to safety, and I was left to wonder what the hell just happened. Only in the place where dreams unfold will your problems be solved by the harbinger of gold? Harbinger of gold. I repeated to myself over and over again. There was a significance behind this riddle. That much was obvious. However, I couldn't piece the damn thing together. In any case, I was going to be late if I didn't leave soon, and this was a conundrum best solved by multiple minds. Maybe Diddy could provide some insight. This golfing trip, surprisingly enough, was causing a bit more of a problem than I had anticipated, though. Obviously, this was the day I was going to hang out with Diddy, and I needed to pick up that IZOD golf apparel. So, you know, I figured I should go to Sears. At this point, you know, I was about an hour behind schedule, and my, my phone had been strangely cut, so, you know, why not get out for a while? I walked over to my desk and grabbed the new shirt. It was the one with Larry, the inebriated physics walrus, on it. I put it on and was on my way out the door. I walked down only a few flights of stairs. After all, you know, I, I only live on the third floor of my apartment building, with my neighbor Bernie across the hall. I listened to him bitch about the phones being out, and, you know, I said hi to the old lady in 2C, you know, the usual. And then I continued out in the front door, pushing open its doubly goodness, and, you know, suffering the blinding light of the sun. Which... Okay, this isn't this isn't a parenthesis in the book, but I gotta add this in as a sub parenthesis. This is probably gonna push the video over way, but why is the sun still blinding me when I've clearly been up for a very large period of t at least a somewhat large period of time? You know, I had time to eat, watch the news, and you know, answer phone call and possibly give chase to a culprit down the road. And the sun, yet the sun is still blinding to me as I walk out the door. It's like it's that movie. I don't know if you've seen this movie, The Core, with Aaron Eckhart. They, you know, they have to go to the center of the earth and, you know, make the core spin again because the sun is, I don't know, if they don't, the ozone is going to go away or whatever, and it does momentarily, and the, the sun gets through and it burns this guy's arm, he's sticking out his car window. It's like that, I don't want to get any further into this argument, but why is the sun still burning my eyes? That's, that's just my question, I've been up for a while in this part, so. I'm not going to go any further with that. Okay, where was I? Uh, oh, there we are. It had just ri <laughs> risen. It had just risen over the eastern horizon. You fuck me in the ass. It had just risen over the eastern horizon. Astronomy knowledge! It obstructed my view for the most part. It also made me sneeze, though, because ever since I was a kid, I've always sneezed when I go into the sunlight. You know, if anybody has a theory as to why that occurs, you know... My, you know, feel free to enlighten me on that one. My email is uh, tbron7777 at gmail.com. So uh, feel free to shoot me a message on that one, because I'm really not sure about the science behind that. It didn't blind me so much that I couldn't see good old Helga, though. Yes, my silver 2002 Ford Focus. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where was this car before? You know, when I was walking and almost got shot by a hooker? I apologize in advance for all the plot holes and confusion this book has and will bring you. Um, oh, God. Sat more scratched and rusty than, I, than ever before, and I hopped right in, sliding across the hood on my way to the driver's side. Because I left straight from the plot-influencing event, I was a bit unprepared. I even forgot to put on pants. I was all out of whack, not to mention that I lost my GPS somehow. I could have sworn it was in my damn room, and then it was just gone all of a sudden. I must have left it in BK or, you know, in Ben's car, I thought. At least that was what I hoped. That thing cost me a hundred bucks. As I drove down Ventura Boulevard, though, I scouted down roadways, utterly lost on my own turf. You know, even though I said at the beginning of the book that I knew everything there was to know about L.A. Yeah, that's, that's a bit of an oversight. As well as on the topic of that terrible riddle. I already missed my Garmin and Ben. I could have used both of them hugely at the time. Ben on the topic of that riddle and the Garmin regarding where the hell I was. Anywho, Ventura continued down for quite some time, being one of the longest roads I knew of in the city, even though I just said that I didn't know the road and I was lost. 
Oh my god, I really need to get my shit together here. I followed it down a ways, driving past slum after slum after slum, and enough hobos to put me in thousands of dollars of debt. It was rough, and I had to admit, with that hooker hanging around in my short-term memory, I was still a bit on edge. It was just then that I was met by some old friends on the roadway that were anxious to show me their new toys, gangsters with grenade launchers. Yes, they weaved from lane to lane, getting the best angle to fire upon my car. When the first shot sounded with a resounding blast, I went into straight-up James Bond mode. You know, obviously, Pierce Brosnan Bond. Dodging a grenade here and another there, I was truly invincible against their stormtrooper aim. And, you know, props to anybody who gets that reference, by the way. Honestly, them being a group of seasoned killers and all made this a bit embarrassing for their reputation. So I just, I decided to pull over. Enough of this nonsense, I thought. You know, I'll put the final nail in the coffin right here, right now. You know, it was at this time that they thought they had me. Well, they were dead wrong. And they would soon be dead. As I heard footsteps on my driver's side, I took a deep breath. I rolled down the window, knowing in my mind that I had this under complete control. Excuse me, gangster. Does there seem to be a problem? It was a rather large black man that came up to the window. And I'm not being racist or anything, guys. That was how it went down, so hop off the D already. And lowered his shoulder as if to lean up against Helga. This is who the boss wanted us to pick off? Ha! Me and my gang of high school dropouts will take you out like a fly. To be fair, he, he didn't mention the high school dropout part, you know, but if he was obligated to speak the truth for some reason, like, like, uh, what's his face, uh... Oh, oh it's Jim Carrey! Oh, I'm gonna roll with this, though, because I, I don't even care. I'm gonna roll with this. I'm not even gonna cut it. If he was, like, Jim Carrey and, uh... In that, in that one, ah, oh, fucking A, I don't even remember the name of the movie, this is horrible, just trust me, there was a movie with Jim Carrey, and he was obligated to tell the truth, I think it was like Yes Man, or something like that, I don't even, I don't even fucking care, it doesn't even phase me, but anyways, if he was forced to say the truth for some reason, that was what he would have said, said the gangster as he accentuated the fact that he still held the key to my demise on the strap around his shoulder, I was confused, what the hell do you mean by your boss, who the hell are you working for, I said frantically, Reality was beginning to set in that my fate was beginning to shape into the same as Ben's. With all that crap that had happened in the last 24 hours, I needed to know what that gangster knew. Unfortunately, he was too busy laughing over the fact that he was sent to kill a 15-year-old, who apparently already has his license, by the way, to enlighten me in the slightest. So, I replied as sincerely as I could in a scenario such as this. By that, I mean I took out dual magnums, where did I get these, and proceeded to shoot out just about anything that moved near my car, at least ten were senselessly murdered, including a hooker. Hashtag payback. I sighed as the problem had been dealt with, and swiftly so. So I continued my journey afterward. Don't stop believing that you can get the eyes out. And reached the Sears in a matter of about a minute and a half. The building itself was small, being the older of the two Sears in town. It has always had the best deals, though, and I was a regular. I parked in the large lot of, out front of it, about in the middle of the spaces. Not so close that I was considered lazy, but not so far that I would shed ten pounds of water weight out on the way there. The heat was brutal that day, a blistering 96 degrees. Obviously, the sun was shining bright, but it was still really humid, so things were even worse than you'd think. I was sweating already, my middle parking space strategy seemingly foiled before it had even begun. This cloudless sky and its hinting of a beautiful day had fooled me for the first and last time. I walked to the door of Sears, slowly at first. As I continued to secrete, however, I picked up the pace, hoping for AC sooner in my future. That wish came true. I reached the double doors. Which, you know what, there have been a lot of double doors in this story thus far, right? You know, I don't see what everybody has against single doors. I mean, I mean I'm looking at one right now. It doesn't look too bad. It's the door to the club. That's a single door. I just don't see what everybody has against it. I mean, at least the story doesn't have, like, Dumbledores. That that wouldn't be good. That'd be a copyright issue right there. Uh, but anyways, and I gratefully threw them open. Here at last, I thought to myself. Here at last. I had mentioned earlier that Izod Golf Apparel had been high on my list of things to get for a while, but I never really did have a reason to make the purchase. Sure, the style is classy, yet sports-oriented, but, you know, I really saw no reason to dish out the cash for a sport I had never even played. Rest assured, you know, I, I say that as if you're worried or something, that this perception would change as I entered the men's department. Sure, I browsed a bit, eyeing the fabulous deal on Calvin Klein boxer briefs, 
but I was there for a reason. Keeping that in mind, I marched straight to the display for Izod products. Wouldn't you know my luck? I thought this was going to be a great day, but it turns out I was dead wrong. It was going to be a marvelous day, in fact. All Izod golf apparel was 40% off for one day only? And I was here to claim my reward! I grabbed those clothes that tickled my fancy and was on my way. Arriving at the cashier, I placed the apparel on the counter and he proceeded to ring me up. Bear in mind, I still have no pants on at this point, so if you didn't remember that from earlier, I never put any pants on. It was much more stress-free than I had imagined. Much more so than the original copy of this chapter, at least. I mean, in the original, I got mauled by the perfume department, slept for a few hours, got laid, and assaulted the cashier all in a matter of a page and a half. Yeah. You already have my email? Tell me if you like that better, because I think that might have been better. Proceeding to put on the slacks I had just purchased, I definitely had one of those Christmas morning feelings. I love those really big pockets for some reason. Honestly, I don't know why, there's just, you know, sure the crap falls out of them easily, but you can just stick your hands in there and just, you know, walk around leisurely with your hands in your pockets without feeling that uncomfortable feeling of jeans. It's just so, it's so lovely. Anyways, the things are damn comfortable. I raced giddily out the doors back to Helga and was going to get on my way to Diddy's house. Turns out, I didn't have to go as far as I thought. What's shaking, man? asked Diddy from out of the window of his limo. He was right there waiting for me the whole time. Boy, would that save me on some gas. We've been right here waiting for you for a while. We figured this would save you some gas, Diddy said as if he read the book already. I chuckled with an obvious excitement and jogged towards the car. Hey, thanks, bud. Means a lot. I said, looking at him and nodding to acknowledge his kindness. He nodded back and we were off. I opened the door to the back seats and jumped in to begin what looked to be an epic day of golf. Um, random poem that I wrote in the seventh grade so there isn't wasted space. Uh, lunar eclipse. Dark. Still dark. It's really dark out here. So dark that I ran into a tree, but I didn't know it was a tree, so I called it a person, ran away, and filed it as a hit-and-run incident without getting any charges of first-degree murder or battery. Lunar Eclipse. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Hey, look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out!